Hi, welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to be working on a mixed media project. Um, we'll be using the Pebio glazing resin. Uh, you'll need some kitchen foil, a selection of Pebio brushes, vitrail paints in varying colours, as well as prism and moon. Okay, you'll also need a mixing tin as well. Now it's important to mix uh, the glazing resin and the hardener together thoroughly until you get air bubbles. Now it's also important to use a two to one ratio, so that's two parts of the resin and one part of the hardener. Once mixed thoroughly, pour out into the shape you want. Just like that. You can see those air bubbles there, they will work themselves out naturally, so don't worry about those, that's perfect. Okay, once this is all hardened, it's now time to take it off the foil. As you can see, that's solid. So it does take six hours to go touch dry, but a full 12 hours to harden to the core. We need this hardened to the core. So now it's time to take the foil off. Now your edges are very thin and they will snap at the edges. Don't worry. There you go. Okay, be careful not to snap it lower down. Gently tease off and peel off. If your foil rips, that's fine. see you can still see the texture that I had from the foil you can actually create foil texture by twisting bits of foil underneath or building it up to create a 3d effect under there now this side here has got a shine to it as you can see it's really shiny whereas this side has got more of a mattified and as you can see closely you've got that texture that's on the surface of the foil that's going to be very handy because we're going to paint on this side okay. Now it's important that these paints must be stirred. You cannot shake these. As you can see, it's all silver. Uh, the color is all at the bottom there. You see it's a clearish at the top here. Now you can shake these to your heart's content and they will not mix. You must stir them. So I've got myself a little stick here. And as you can see, that there, that lump is actually what creates the effect with these paints. So it is important that you stir all of your paints really thoroughly. I'm going straight into my vitriol, the black, and get that brush in there. It's a really nice, gorgeous, thick colour. So I'm coming up from the corner here to create the main shape and the main trunk of my tree. So I'll just spread that around. Now, even though vitriol is a glass paint, the black isn't as transparent as some of the others, but it will still show light through if a light is placed behind. I'm just going to wipe that on there for now. I'm not going to clean it because I do need to use that again. And I'm going to switch to my round into the black for trail again. And I'm going to start creating my larger branches where roughly I want them to go. Now these are going to change throughout the picture. So don't worry if you get one in a place where you don't like it. It doesn't matter at this stage. Just get that base on so you know roughly where your tree is going. There. You can do smaller branches. The smaller branches, however, will get covered by the other paint as we start getting the background on. This is just to give a shape and an idea. Okay, so just a few off there like that. So my tree's at an angle, as you can see. I'll bring that down to the edge there as well. There. Okay, now, as I say, that is going to completely move in just a little while. So now I've got to figure out where I want. Do I want a faded sky? Do I want to completely... Um, a sky coming right down to the grasses. Do I want it all one colour? Do I want it multiple colours? I'm just going to start throwing colours in now and we can decide as we go because the best thing about this paint is that you can keep moving it around. So first things first, I want my vitriol blue and I'm not going to put this across the whole tree and into every nook and cranny on there. What I am going to do is into my blue and just put a few bits of blue, get rid of that gold leaf, here and there, all between, not right the way up, I'm not being too precious at this stage, I'm putting it on in different thicknesses as well because it will react to the paint that I'm going to put over afterwards. 
not bothered about it touching the tree or filling it all in or anything like that and if you come through your tree it doesn't matter because we are going to change this as it goes this is just to give you a base idea okay so I've used the brush to apply those now what I'm going to put in the sky as well uh, is some of the moon colours now you've seen how on those little swatches uh, that the moon laces when it touches so that's going to happen to the tree as well and some of these branches here are going to lace out to create the small twigs so that's why I haven't painted them in I'm letting the paint do all the hard work for me so even though I've given that a good stir always best to stir it again just before you use it but also you can drizzle on using your spatula so just drizzle on bring it down into your tree if it touches the black or goes onto it that's fine because it's going to anyway drag that about a bit there now you remember that shape that I showed you with the fantasy moon touching the betrayal and I dragged it I can create those sorts of effects in the sky if I want uh, if I've got a larger area here again you can just pour it on like that and spread it around like I say don't worry about your branches they are going to change shape regardless okay we will reinstate those in just a short while now I'm going to bring that down to here at an angle so I want an angle here where it blends into another colour so I'm going to stop there with that one I'm going to skim that up and over those branches there you'll also see why it's important to get those branches down to start with as well and I'll show you that when all this is dried a little later on right and skim that over there now I do want to cover literally all of my uh, all of my uh, resin so spreading this around I'll bring this down here a little bit more and you can keep adding different amounts different thicknesses Just literally have fun with this stuff there we go now that I've added uh, fantasy moon to the uh, betrayal I will be adding a little bit more of a trail to it later just getting this on and up to the main trunk of the tree now if you come into your tree that's fine we'll reinstate that anyway now as you can see most of my branches that I created have gone that's perfect you'll see why a little later on there Now, time to choose a lighter colour to go in amongst that area there. And I'm going to choose uh, the Fantasy Prism, the honeycomb effect, this one is. And I'm using the eggshell white. There we go. So grabbing a spatula, I'm going to just literally drizzle this on across here and there. Just like that. Now in areas, especially here, I'm going to bring more of it as I get down here. Now you notice I'm not coming into the main tree with this, but it doesn't matter about the branches. I'll bring that further down here. Just like that. There we go. Okay. Now that we're coming into this sort of area here, I'm going to leave that to settle for a bit. As you can still see, the lacing has started to happen here. Now, as it starts, the effect starts to happen, you can move it around and create what you want. But you can see just here, the lacing is starting to happen. OK, so we're going to leave that for a minute to settle into itself. And I'm going to come down here. So here I want more of my reds and yellows. So I've already got some of my lights in there. Uh, I'm not going too yellow with this one because I don't want too many yellows in there on this particular one. So let's just give this one another little stir. There we go. And I'm going to bring that in just there. Now you notice the blue vitrail is still here as well. So this is also going to start lacing in areas. And I'm just going to fill that to there. And then I'm going to, I know I'm taking out some of that lacing, but that will come back. I'm just going to drag that down. Take it to the edge there and bring that in. 
Now remember, what you create here isn't going to be the finished piece. All you're doing is telling the paint where you want it to go, what colours you want where. And at the moment, what I want to do is merge this light into the dark and the dark into the light, just like that. And then allow those effects to come back. So I want more of a merge as opposed to a hard line. If there's some effects I don't like, merge it. There. So I'm just going to wipe off the majority of those lights off there. And I'm just going to merge in this and I'm not going to drag it up because I want the darkest in that top corner. I'm going to drag that down this way towards the tree like that. There we go. Now you can see some of this mottled effect is going on. You've also got some of the prism in there and the moon so you're going to get a multitude of effects and where the vitrail is underneath you'll get a lacing effect going on as well. So you can actually see some of those effects starting to show through at this stage. Those are only going to deepen and get better. If you don't like the effects, you can change them. Okay, Just by running over with a brush, adding a bit more paint, adjusting it where you like. So we've got some of the pinks in there. They've merged with the lighter colours. Now, the bottom down here, we're going to get the colours in and then we're going to start playing with the tree and creating leaves, branches, that sort of thing there. So down the bottom here, we need the green vitrail. And I'm actually going to use the pipette on this one because I don't want it all green down here. What I do want is to create some grasses. So I'm going to use the pipette and just do effectively grass marks coming up into your sky. We are going to get more in there as well anyway and do these in all different directions. Because grass isn't just in one direction. Get a bit more. There we go. This is all going to start changing as well. As you can see, I'm dragging some of the colours down. Let's take that up onto the tree. There we go. There. So I've just got a little bit of a trail going on there. And now I'm going to go in with the Fantasy Prism, uh, the turquoise. And I'm going to use the fan brush. Now again, this brush has been used absolutely loads and as you can see, the bristles are still beautiful and ready to use. Okay, that's thanks to the Pebio soaps, they're amazing. So into the prism and I'm going to use the brush on the side like that and drag that further up where I'm mixing the prism and the vitrail together. I will be dropping more prism in as well. There we go, just like that. Taking that up and in. As you can see, some of these lights are coming down into the greens, giving me my high and low lights on these grasses. When you start running out of the prism, add more. So once I've added these in, bring it into the tree, the other side of the tree there as well. You can see some of these sky effects coming through, the grasses are starting to show up. And you can move that as much as you want. I'm going to put some scratches into those in a bit. But we're going to let that settle for a bit like we did with the skies. You can see all this effect going on here is absolutely incredible and those colours coming through really gives the depth of either a midnight or a sunset sky. Okay, so we're going to return to the tree now. So I want to go back to my black and I want to use a long thin brush so this is a uh, well, it's basically a half size rigger brush there but it's nice and thin so I can get some of the smaller branches in there so I'm going to use that one but first things first I need my round brush to recreate and harden that tree edge so I'm not concerned where the grasses have gone over the trees but I am concerned with this main branch here so you'll need some kitchen towel to, to wipe the other colours off your brush regularly and we're just going to be applying colour and then we're going to be moving it with the colour mover as well. We'll be also using this down here. You can use a stick to do that, but you will get a softer effect if you use the rubber tip. Okay. There we go. There. And branch coming up there. And again, don't be too precise. This stage, it's going to change again. As you add more into it, this will change. 
as you can see, the trail is reacting with the moon and the prism. Yeah, so I want a nice haunting tree going on. All right. Now for the fine brush as well, so you can get some finer branches in there. This is going to give, as this laces out, should give the twig effects of some of these. Now you notice this is done in real time, so all of this is wet into wet. I'm not waiting for any of this to dry. And as you can see, some of these effects are going into the tree as well, giving texture and depth to that tree. Uh, so this is being done in real time. There. Uh, Right, allow that to settle in a little bit. Some of those twigs and branches will disappear. Some will lace out completely. But as you can see, we're really getting a depth of haunting going on there. Let's just sharpen that edge there. Now, as this is drying over several hours, you'll see that things will start to change. If you don't like those changes, reinstate it. Just by stroking through. Okay, and as the paint stiffens, eventually it'll stop moving. So keep an eye on this as it's drying. Just take a look every 10 minutes for the first hour and then after that um, it should mostly stop moving but if it carries on just watch it every half an hour after that and go from there. Right, so now that we've got our base of our tree down we need some foliage on there as well. We're going to come back to this grass in just a minute. As you can see we've got some really nice effects going on down here but we're going to add to that. So. Coming back to uh, going back to the tree, we have leaves and foliage. So, as you can see, there's already a lot of, of prism and moon on there. So I'm going to come back to my vitriol glass paint and my pipette, and I want my pipette to spatter. So I'm going to take up some paint into it, squeeze it out, and then spatter, just like that. Quite easy. So again, take paint up into it, squeeze it out, and then splatter. Now this is looking very dark. I want to create a bit of light in there as well, especially on that tree. So I'm going to go now to the Vitrail Glitter. So here we have the uh, Glitter Medium. And it is literally just betrayal, so it is your transparent paints. And as you can see in there, we have the glitter in the betrayal clear medium. Now you can brush this on, so I'm going to use the nice flat brush here. Uh, you can pipette it on, you can drizzle it on, you can place this on however you wish. I'm using the brush because I want to create texture in the tree there. There, take that up, create some depth to your tree. There. Add a few chunks in here and there. Just add some highlight to change your tree. Now interestingly, you remember the base I put down before? Well, we've done this on a completely clear sheet of the resin. So when we pick this up, once it's dried and turn it over, there's still going to be a tree underneath the paint. It'll be different and it'll be a different tree to the one that's on this surface here as well. So effectively, you're going to have double-sided art. That is the aim today. So you can actually turn it over and use it on both sides. I've often thought how many times what my painting would look like from the other side. So this is a way of seeing both sides of a drawing or a painting. There. Now, I also want some spatter with the vitrail glitter. I'm just going to make sure there's no more green spattering out of there. And take up some glitter, oh, spatter that out, and then spatter with the glitter. Not as effective as with the green. So if I take some of that now, So we've got a couple of droplets coming out there, that's better, I wanted larger. Now you notice I've left the green that's in my brush and I've left it there. That's fine. It'll add to the glitter, so you'll end up with green glitter. 
Yeah. Now you notice some of those small branches or twigs that I did have now gone into tiny little twigs and my branches have shrunk a little. So we're going to start and reinstate those in a minute before we work on the grass areas. I'm just going to reinstate some of these. I'm just literally tapping on using the corner of my brush to create a bit of foliage texture going in amongst some of those twigs because we're going to reinstate some of those. There we go. And this is done with the green vitrail and vitrail glitter paint. Excellent, starting to take shape. So, we're going to put some glitter down here as well in a moment, but before that, I need to reinstate some of these branches. There. Add more paint if you need to. Don't forget, if you're trying to move the one paint around, if you get the other paint on your brush, wipe it off. Because you can always add more if you need to. There. And you can play with this for hours. Very relaxing. Change the shape of your tree. Change it again. Change your mind. Do something else. Slap another colour in. Just enjoy. Now I'm going to reinstate that down there. So the tree's in front of those grasses. There we go. Drag some of that glitter down as well. There. Now let's sort out these grasses because they're starting to lose their definition. So using the rubber tip mover down here all i'm going to do it's literally using it stroking away from me creating some more defined grass marks now these will be all over the place so don't be too precious about which direction you're flicking in grasses all don't flick in the same direction now we're going to add some betrayal glitter into that as well now flick it through into the sky just keep moving. There. Right, I'm going to add some lights down into these grasses as well so we can really get some highlights in there. And I'm going to add that in with the Fantasy Moon because we've got Prism and we have the Trail down here but we don't have Fantasy Moon. So I'm going to add a little bit of this purple from the sky. Now it's not going to turn out bright purple. What it will do is add a bit of depth, light and shade to the base. Okay, so wipe off that off my fan brush. There we go. And with the light purple down here, flick some of that through the grass. I don't want too much, just something to add a bit more depth. There we go. That will merge in as it dries. You can see it lacing straight away when it comes in contact with that betrayal. It's amazing. Okay, so now again, use your rubber tip. Flick through, create different grasses in different directions. Create the texture, pull it around. There. Excellent. Pull that through there and I'm going to put some betrayal in there now, the black betrayal. So back to my round brush, into the black betrayal. There. It's just where there's a dip in the actual texture. Now the texture doesn't show through this side but when we turn it over we'll see, should see some texture from the actual foil in there as well so you can create a texture if you wanted to create grassy textures you could even put dried grasses underneath your foil press your foil down onto them and you've got the textures there straight away the paint will gather in those areas to create a different effect right so I'm just going to literally drag this around the edges just pull that to the edge so we've got colour right to the edge of the uh, resin there we go and I'm going to check on this in 10 minutes time, just to see if I need to move it any further. Right, as you can see some of the paint starting to stiffen already, that's fantastic. There. Reinstate anything that you feel is disappearing, like some of the branches for example, you can just keep adding them in. Add more paint. Okay. So 
some of these branches will vanish. Some will need reinstating. You notice some of the leaves are vanishing as well. You can also flick more paint on at a later date. Don't be scared about adding more. As long as you remember to keep your subject matter, what you want to paint in mind, that's what you're going to create. So for me, I want a tree. There. Now I'll check back in 10 minutes and see where that's going. So I'm liking some of these colours that's going on there now, but I do want to add a tiny bit more foliage over the top. So again, I'm switching to my green moon, which is the uh, turquoise, and sorry, the prism, and it's the, which gives the honeycomb effect. Paint on me again. <laughs> and don't forget to give that a good stir. Now I only want the tiniest amount on my spatula. Because again, I'm just going to dot on and I don't want big blobs. There we go. A little bit bigger blobs than that though. There we go. I'm just going to drop this on a few pieces here and there. There we go. As we can see, some of these splats that I did earlier are now settling in quite beautifully and they've moved. So don't panic when it first goes on. As you can see, it does change. Now I'm going to leave this now for at least half an hour. After I've just straightened this line again, it keeps creeping in just there. So keep an eye on that. Um, but you can paint over the top of it once it's dry. However, I am just going to quickly move that. There. And all that's happening basically, the paint is pulling. As you can see, it's a lot stiffer. And it will continue to stiffen. So I'm just going to pop some more paint in there. Black for trail again. And I'm just going to use my mover that in there like that there we go okay so I'm going to check on this again in another 10 minutes there as we can see there's uh, not been too many changes this time um, but what I'd like to do is pick this up and move it around because there is a light shine on there just to give you an idea of some of the effects that's going on with that paint and you can see that dip in the resin where we actually create it over the foil so the texture's kind of helping a little there and there we go now this has mostly stopped moving it will still move a little bit but it's not going to move much from here as you can see it's gone tacky I can touch it without moving it okay so I'll probably be checking on this now once every hour or so just to make sure that everything is okay with it make sure it's in a dust free environment um, and allow this to fully dry welcome back that was an incredibly long wait um, as you can see here this is now completely bone dry i did add a little bit more glitter to the tree here and i've signed the painting as well now as you can see they're moving and you see all the different effects there now when i turn this over as you can see there's a different painting underneath and it's glass shiny so we want to create this effect here on this side here so all I'm going to do now is encapsulate it in the glazing resin okay now don't forget with this glazing resin you must stir it thoroughly if it's not mixed completely you won't get a shiny finish um, what will happen is it'll stay tacky in some areas because that bottle B is actually the hardener for the resin and the resin won't harden. There we go. Make sure it's good and for good and properly stirred up there. Now you see those little air bubbles on the stick? That's perfect. Okay, so again, I'm just going to pour this over the painting. There we go, and allow it to spread. It is self-leveling. It will spread. Right, as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble with it constantly running. This where it's thinner, obviously the piece itself is sloped. So I'm just going to drag that resin back onto the painting. And what I've got is the tin, some of the tin foil that we started with. So I'm going to drag that back on. Oh, and we've lost some down here as well. Right, I'm going to gently pick that up. Don't worry about smudging it at this stage, it is self-leveling. Place down the foil. Put that way on the foil. 
And all I'm going to do now is bend up the edges like I did at the start to prevent it running past where you want it to run. Okay, so again, we'll leave that now and it's, uh, keep checking on it on a regular basis. And uh, we'll see how that goes. Don't forget, wear your gloves. Um, if you do get this on your fingers, um, wash with warm soapy water to get off any residues off your fingers. There we go. And we'll come back to this once it's dried. Okay, so now this is fully hardened, um, as you can see, nice and solid there. And as you can see, the beautiful glass shine. Look at the colours coming out of that. Absolutely stunning. Right, so time to get it off the foil. So peel all of your foil off. There we go. As you see, that's coming away quite easily and quite nicely. Just remove all of your foil. To reveal the painting that's actually on the back. There we go. Just take all of that off there. Now, as I said before, you've got two paintings here, one on the back and one on the front. What's also um, a bonus feature of this is the fact that it is transparent in areas where you have the vitriol paint. So where you have the vitriol paint. And there. So if we peel that, just like that. Take all of that foil away. Yeah, as you can see, it reveals a really lovely painting. Now, you can see the mirror shine that's on this as well. Absolutely stunning. So, effectively, this is finished. And as you can see, hardened to the core. And a beautiful surface shine on there with all the colours showing through. Now, the light that I've got here, I'm just going to put that behind. As you can see, it reveals some see-through points of the final piece. There. And if I pop down here, I actually have a piece that I've framed. Now this one, you can trim it down or sand it down at the edges here to create a nice smooth finish or file it into a certain shape. And once that's completely dry, you can have it framed. Now here's one that I had framed. Like that. Now as you can see, this is in a box frame. There we go. And a beautiful box frame there. And the other thing I like about this is what I had put inside the frame. There's a little bit of lighting there. So as you can see now, the light is shining through the painting itself and every colour change reveals a different part of the painting and changes the painting. It's a beautiful thing to sit down next to on the fireplace or when you're watching TV of an evening, a bit of mood lighting. So I'll leave you there with that. I hope you've enjoyed this project. As you can see the possibilities are literally endless with these products. I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you.